the weak jobs number that we got on Friday, way weaker than expected, just 20,000 added, uh, combined with the weaker than expected retail sales number for December, does that concern you? Where do you think we are? I still think the economy is doing pretty well. The jobs numbers, they're hard to know what to make of from month to month, and they upgraded the previous two months, which were just blockbusters. Uh, I, I think the best guess is the job numbers will be strong going forward. Of course, eventually, you know, you're at full employment, less people pouring into the labor force. Uh, the weak retail sales numbers, I don't understand, so I don't know uh, what's going on there. Con uh, you know, wages are up, consumer confidence is up. I would tend to think this is a soft patch. The rest of the world is in a softer patch, but uh, I think the U.S. will still have a good year in 2019. Who knows? Grover, what about you? What do you think in terms of what we're seeing in the economy, what you're seeing with uh, taxes coming in, and then with the budget being presented today, too, by the president? Uh, what are your expectations on all of it? Sure, on taxes, I mean, the, the big changes that came with the 2017 tax bill is that the corporate rate, which made America not competitive at 35, you know, down to 21, that's forever. That's not one of those disappears in five or 10 years. And I think we're going to see longer run, more capital brought into the United States. You already saw a lot of the American earnings come back already. It can all come back tax-free now, so it might as well be back already. You could keep the money in a bank in London. To bring it back, there's no penalty anymore. So, uh, and overseas money's coming in because we're a better investment bet than we used to be. That's going to hopefully drive the productivity increases with more capital per worker in the United States. What was expected in terms of helping growth was for it to take several years of that investment to kick in and begin to show. So everything that's showing up now in terms of stronger growth is nice to have, perhaps in anticipation of, of all that investment that's been coming in and being put to better use. Uh, I think we're looking at a stronger economy because more capital per worker, and that's not something that's going to change. There mm -hmm. is the five-year uh, full expensing for business investment. I think mm -hmm. we should make that permanent. But for the next five years, that's a tremendous incentive to invest in the United States uh, in making workers more productive. Uh, and on the personal side, those last about 10 years, but that will be made permanent just as Bush's tax cuts were made permanent uh, even Just by because it, you think it's hard to raise taxes once they've been cut? Yep, yep. It's not impossible, but it's tougher. Uh, Ken, you are a little less convinced that the strong economy is coming from the tax cuts. What, what are your thoughts? You're not dogmatic on this. Yeah, so there are two views about the tax cuts. One is that the, you know, it's just Keynesian growth. You've had a tax cut and you're getting growth. And another view is uh, maybe closer to Grover's, which is that it provides more incentives. I actually think the tax cuts were not such a big element of why the economy is doing well, and it's just normal recovery from financial crises. Uh, I, I, I think that the corporate tax cut, I actually think, agree, was a good idea, although I would have set a higher rate for it. The simplification is the part I really liked. The simplification uh, for, the, for the individual. Cor for the corporate. Or, or for, for the corporate. corporate. Not, the individuals did not get simpler, at least mine didn't. Uh, but no, the corporate There'll tax cut cleaner, who, who less be. exemptions. Yeah, and, Again, just to redirect, yeah. Grover was very careful and I think uh, really smart in, in saying that it, it, what we're seeing now is not necessarily the uh, effects of the tax cuts that are expected over a five-year period. I think the administration's kind of made a mistake in saying, look, the tax cuts are working because we're doing 3 percent growth. Mm -hmm. it, 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 in Hassett's view, it's a longer-term thing that kicks in over time with productivity and wage growth that's yet yet to come. Grover, Grover, is that what you're saying? I mean, I mean the investments yet to come, too. Right, I mean, and that's the productivity really gains and the wage gains. Okay. Like, we'd like to see the investment go up. Grover, you agree with that? Yeah, look, we changed the rules so that we're no longer chasing capital overseas, leaving American capital stranded overseas. We make it more productive. We had uh, German elected officials over to talk to us at Americans for Tax Forum a while ago, and they said, we used to be able to tell investors, invest in Germany. We only take 25 percent. The Americans will steal 35 percent. <laughs> invest with us. And that was a great sales pitch. Right. Now, you guys are at 21. We're at 25. What do we tell people about why they should invest in Germany with their crazy labor laws and all these other challenges they have and energy prices way beyond Americans? What do we sell them now? So we are going to see more capital coming into the United States, and it takes a while to take that and turn it into productivity increases. Right. So I think we're looking at a very long run. I would point out the economy, <laughs> this is not some straight line recovery. Things had begun to falter in the last uh, two years before the Trump election. Uh, and a lot of those numbers had been going south for some times in terms of growth 
and others. So the, the spike up was driven by people knowing that all of the labor regulations that were going to take effect if mm -hmm. Hillary had won were not going to take effect and the other regulations that were so awful that Obama didn't dare do them True. when he was still president. That deregulation is also something that continues to give us benefits out into the future. Can I ask you really quickly, Grover, sure. this is a question. We had a conversation earlier today with the head of the OMB just about the mm -hmm. president's budget today. Uh, the administration is looking to increase spending on defense, another 5 percent. They're looking for a backdoor way to kind of do that without being, uh, without allowing domestic spending to increase at the same time, because they want to spend on defense, not on domestic. Yeah. Um, when you look at all of the budget deficit issues, when you look at uh, the, the deficit that we're running, a lot of that comes from increased defense spending. It, it's not because we're not raising as much money in taxes. How do you, as somebody who is so adamant about taxes, come down on that? Would you like to see them cut defense spending? Are you okay with running a deficit? Deficit there. What do you think? There was a jump in defense spending in the last budget, and Mattis told people, guys, get used to it, Secretary of Defense. Yeah. We're not getting more. Uh, the problem is, if you ask this Congress for more defense spending, you have to pay one or two dollars on social welfare spending right. for every dollar of defense that you actually get through. It's a very expensive trade there, um, and they have not yet, they haven't even done a BRAC which is a, you know, a base closing uh, commission, which can save billions of dollars. And it's been done six times before. They haven't done that in this presidency. There's a legislation, Cal, yeah. I, I, I just want a philosophical question. Um, you know, let's say we can't cut spending because it's hard to take things back. We never have, nobody in the history of the world is able to do that. So let's say we do try to raise revenue somehow. Um, mm -hmm. Now it's popular to, to talk about you know, taxing the wealthy because they don't pay enough or, you know, they, they, their, their assistants pay lower. You know, you've seen all the, uh, all the, the, mm -hmm. the way people portray it right now, that it's basically unfair. Do you have an, a way to raise taxes uh, in, a, in a way that would actually make a difference to our uh, bu budget deficit? Could it be done with just rich people? Do you need to do everyone? Do you, is there any way that you could see in the future, other than cutting spending, for dealing with our financial problems in, in terms of raising taxes. How would you do it? Sure. First of all, growth is the best way to raise revenue that. without raising but taxes. That sounds okay? like trickle down, though. And, and they'll no, just, no, no, no. That's supply you, side down economics. Doesn't work. Stop with the trickle down. Give me a way to raise the, more revenue. How do, the how do you do The only way it? we've raised more revenue that brought the deficit down, like during the Clinton years, was when we had growth and stopped Clinton's spending program. <clears throat> so you need spending restraint. You don't have to cut it, you just have to slow its growth. And you've got to have economic growth. Plus, the government has all sorts of assets from Spectrum that, and other things that you can sell off. There's a great deal. We've been making money leasing. So you wouldn't land. raise taxes on anyone in any way ever again? I think that's a fair statement. But, yeah, there's no reason is, to raise this taxes. Is, this, this, is, this is yeah. nuts. I mean, I think the future, the next 10 or 20 years, now has listening. taxes Now he's going. excited. Now you, okay, now he's hearing what he wants to hear. Go ahead. As, no, the future has taxes going up, but certainly on the upper 10 percent. Uh, how do you part, do it to them? How do you do it to them? I mean, you can do it with income. Higher marginal income, rates? Yeah, higher marginal rates, inheritance On taxes. who? On, on what, what do you mean 10 percent? The top 10 percent? Yeah, I, I, th I think you're looking at uh, What's taxes the top 10 percent? That's people that may, what, 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 what's the cutoff for that then? For the I, top 10 percent? That's like something, 100, huh? Something, some, something like that. Yeah. There's no money there. Well, I, I, There's I mean, no money there. It's not enough, there. Money. I mean, not enough money, though, Ken, is it? That's, no, that, no. you got to go down below that, don't you, Grover? No, the, the, it, the concept that if we, you know, cut, ta you know, that we raise taxes on somebody, we raise taxes on everybody, that's been a shell game. That's proven not to be true. But is it, can you get years. enough out of the top 10%? Enough, enough, enough for what? I mean, enough to, to make a difference. Enough to oh, where you can, go ahead, Grover. $90 trillion for the Green New Agenda. Uh, you know, 90 trillion. Where are you going to get 90 trillion? Look, I, I, I the reason why that. the left that's talks about man. the reason that's their pack problem, not mine. The reason why the left likes to talk about a 70% tax rate is because they think that you'll look at that and not m notice that your rates are going up. The difference between the United States and Sweden, Portugal, and Denmark, the countries with the high top rates, is not how they tax rich people. It's how they soak the middle class. A 20% that and higher income taxes, much higher than our middle class pays. That's their goal, is to raise taxes on the middle class. But if they talk about the top rate, they think they can fool you into noticing that they're not gouging everybody else.
That's and the there, plan. There will be a carbon tax eventually, too. No, I there mean, won't. Well, Maine just uh, voted it that's, down. That's, that's, Washington that's just voted thinking. it down. I, I, I think going forward, uh, there, there's overwhelming consensus to do something in that dimension, and we need to.